All right, so if you've noticed already, I know a little bit about After Effects, but I've been asked a few times now for a full beginner's breakdown. So sit back, relax, take a seat, experience Dolby Digital Sound. Wait, where have I heard that before? Let's get started. If you're new around here, my name is Arm and I make videos every Monday at 12 p.m. Now you'll be surprised that this award-winning software that's been used from movies to TV shows, it's actually mind-blowing when you think what this software on your computer can do. I'm sure if you scroll through my comments, you'll find that I talk too fast. So can you slow down? So I'm going to try, guys. I'm going to take you through building one of the most common effects you can make. It actually covers a lot of fundamental aspects of After Effects and I'll be translating some VFX terminology. Okay, so without further ado, let's open up After Effects. When I first started, I absolutely hated it. None of it made sense. The layout was so different. The best way I can think about it is it's Photoshop for videos. But that's if you use Photoshop. If you aren't, if you aren't familiar with either, both work on a layer-based style system. Think of it as a stack of plates, with each plate having a different element of effect, adding to the original plate at the bottom, which is the footage, and building upon that. So in that sense, you don't need to know anything to get started. Grab a coffee, do whatever you need to do to get into the tutorial zone, because we're going to start now. Alright, so we're going to add some neon signs to this demolished building. It's surprisingly simple to do. Before I learned how to do After Effects, I felt it was impossible to learn. But trust yourself and come at it with confidence and you'll crack it. So what is After Effects and what do we use it for? Well, let's just Wikipedia it. Adobe After Effects is a digital visual effects, motion graphics and compositing application developed by Adobe Systems and used in post-production processes of filmmaking and television production. Among other things, After Effects can be used for keying, tracking, compositing and animation. It also functions as a very basic non-linear editor, audio editor and media transcoder. In 2019, here it is, the program won an Academy Award for scientific and technological achievements but anyway back to your opened after effects and it should look like this it'll have this pop-up window that outlines your recent projects you've used but we're gonna click new on the left here if it's completely foreign to you that's okay over here on the left we have the project panel all of your media clips all of your files pictures video audio whatever you're gonna use for the project sits the panel consists of interpret footage which works with proxy, which we're not going to look at. Creating a new folder for organization. New comp, which we'll come back to, and the delete button. We're going to import the footage here by either dragging and dropping the footage in, clicking command and control and I, or what I'm going to do is double click on the blank space here and find the footage. On the right hand side of this, we have where all the cool stuff lives. Effects, text, adjustments, play buttons, but we'll all come back to this. Right at the bottom here is a timeline which works as you'd expect it from left to right, up and down, but we'll get more into the timeline in a bit. Finally, at the top here, we have super useful tools that you're always going to end up using. This panel consists of a selection tool, lets you select a point or object and move it around. Hand tool lets you move the scene around. Zoom tool, you, I'm sure you know. Rotation tools, again, I'm sure you know. Unfilled camera tool works in 3D space. Anchor tool lets you move where the object is anchored, anchored to. Rectangle tool. These are different shape tools that can be used that can be used for masks or shapes. Pen tool allows you to draw a custom shape or mask. Text. Well, you know. Paintbrush. This does paint, but it also allows you to paint out errors. Clone lets you copy properties of an area of the footage and paste it wherever you want. Erase tool, you know. Roto brush tool, roto, another word for mask tool. Pit puppet pen tool, pin an object down. Then right here in the middle, we have our main composition window. This is basically where you're going to be putting everything together and where the magic will really happen. This panel consists of magnification, rotation, pop-up, zoom in and out, essentially. 
grid and guide options, safety guidelines for TV, toggle mask and shape path visibility, turn the mask outline on and off, time code, code at which the video is sat at, channel color management breaks up the footage into primary colors, red, green, blue, and alpha. Rotation down sample factor pop-up lets you drop down the resolution of the footage to let you work on the composition faster. Region of interest lets you select an area of work to work with. This is good if the footage has a lot of information. 3D view pop. The camera view, but this really works in 3D space. Select view outlay lets you have more than one view and again, mainly for 3D work. In the project panel, drag your footage onto the composition button here. This will create a project based around the footage info, so frame size and frame rate. You can go file, new, comp and choose a different comp setting. Better you do it this way. Once you've done that guys, give yourself a round of applause because if you stuck with me and you've made it this far, you've honestly sat through some of the biggest hurdles when it comes to understanding After Effects, which is the user interface. Hit the like button so I know that you've got this far. I'll be cheering you on. Okay, back to the footage. I need to track the direction of the camera movement. So when I stick the neon sign to the wall or to the area, it'll move in the same direction as the wall. To do this, you'll need to track the window. If you can't see it, go to the top, click window and click on tracker. Now, to be honest, this is really isn't the best tracking tool out there, the, but for beginners, it's excellent to start with. Make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the footage, choose a clean area to track and click on track motion. That'll then bring up this new window. Be careful here, as you'll only know it's new because of the tab at the top here. This is a window for tracking. Click on track motion and that'll bring up this box. Now we can move this to whatever we want to track. It has to be clear enough for After Effects to pick up. This is an important point here. The inner square is what it will actually track and the outer square is the area the tracked item may move into. You can make this as big or as small as you like. Just be clever about it. Finally, hit the track forward button. Super important here as well. Once that's tracked, we're going to right click on the timeline and create a new null object. And what this is, is basically an invisible layer. We can use this to put the track data into it and link it to anything we want, like the neon signs. Move the playhead right back to the beginning and click on edit target in the track window. Make sure it's looking at the null object and hit OK. Then hit apply and click on OK. If you don't do this, the track data won't be placed in this layer. Now, let's take a step back and see what you've actually done. You've created a new comp and you've tracked the footage and then you've placed the tracked information into a new layer. That's loads, guys. Well done. Hit the like button if you got this far. Now, in the timeline, the panel consists of many things, but for this one, all you need to know are Motion blur. This applies to camera blur, which is naturally found within film. 3D layer puts the layer into 3D space. Parent and link lets you link information from one layer to the other using this pick whip tool. Toggle switch modes. Switches between different buttons. Modes. This is the way you'd like the layers to blend into the background. Enable motion blur. Turns motion blur within the composition on and off. And zoom. And on each individual layer, you have a visibility eye, which turns on and off the layer, an audio on off button, solo, so you click on this when you just want to see this layer, and a lock layer, so you, nothing can be changed for this. Here's some of the vital shortcuts you need to know while working in the timeline. S for scale, P for position, R for rotation, T for opacity. I hope you're still with me, guys. Now... We're all go we all need to add the neo sign footage. I've selected signs that have a black background because getting rid of black in After Effects is really easy. Ignore the shutter stock logo. I downloaded these from their website as a trial. So import your signs into After Effects and drag and drop this above the clip layer in the composition. Click on the project panel and drag and drop this onto the timeline in the composition above the footage and bam. 
Just like that, we can now have fun with this. If you click and drag in the composition window, you can move the sign around any way you'd like. So let's reposition this. If it if your screen looks anything like mine, it's just the neon sign with a back background, which is completely fine. What you'll need to do in order to get it to look better is change the blend mode from normal to screen. And basically what that does is all the math stuff in the background, which you don't have to worry about or even care really, it'll take all the black take all the black out and make it transparent. However, it's not perfect because it can make the footage in that area a little bit brighter, but we can fix this. But we can fix this. But first, we're going to use the track data. So this effect already looks pretty cool, but it doesn't stick to the building. Parent the sign layer to the null layer using the pick whip it tool. If you hit play, you can see the sign sticks to the building. Only thing left here is to add some color correction to this. In the effects and presets panel, type curves and drag and drop this onto the neon layer. Nothing will change on screen, but there's a new effects control tab under the projects panel area. This is where the curve settings are. I'm going to use the curves to bring out the color more. Now within the curves, you can change the channel to individual red, green and blue channels. Or use the white line as an overall change to the color. I'm going to keep it to RGB and put this deep dip in, into the curve, making the color pop and bam, it looks much better. The brightish area has now gone. You can add to this using more effects like and even place an adjustment layer above all of your footage and have this as a color correction layer on its own to affect everything underneath it. And you can really fine tweak it, but I'm not going into that today. My footage looks nice and ready to go ahead and render. Before that, I'm just going to add a few more neon signs and track a few more different track points to build this scene up a little bit. Bro, now we're ready to render. Click on composition at the top and click add to render queue. This will now open a new tab at the bottom on the timeline named render. After Effects has placed your composition within this ready to render. Exporting and After Effects is done through render queues or through media encoder, but I tend to keep it all inside After Effects as I've noticed a it's a little bit faster on render time and sometimes it gets a little less errors. In the new render queue tab, we're going to change the settings. Click on lossless. Now you might have heard from everyone on the internet, they love to save it. They love to save files as H264 files, as it keeps the file size low, but the footage high res, high quality. But After Effects removed it conveniently, but they have their own render program that you can send it to that does have it, but you have to buy a piece, you have to buy that software, or you can buy a piece of software that you can plug in and place into After Effects. However, I use Apple ProRes 444. Under format, choose QuickTime and then click on format options. Change the video codec to Apple ProRes 4444. Why 4444? It's really bad. I can't remember really, but basically it means it'll be high definition footage. And hit OK. The output is where we're going to choose to save the file to and what we're going to name it. Once you've chosen those, hit OK. Once you're happy with all those settings, hit render and After Effects does its job. Now, if you have a dinosaur laptop like I do, it can take 10 to 20 minutes for this 10 to 20 second clip. Um, but if you have a new computer, it can take a matter of seconds and you're done. And just think about it. You went from a complete noob on After Effects to mastering it. Well, more like a novice, you know, and if you found this easy to follow, I would recommend looking at my other you at my other tutorials if you want to get more into the After Effects thing. This was hopefully a good intro into After Effects. Please like this video and comment if you want me to do a second video as there's a few points I haven't gone through, like masking, keyframing, anchor points, keying. So let me know if I should make a part two of this video. I'm also trying to get more into animation to build into these tutorials to make, to bring through more of my personality and hopefully make it better. Let me know what you think. 
I mean, my drawing's not the best, but I'm sure I'll get there. I hope. As always, thanks for everything, guys. Hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you next Monday and stay inspired.